Well, should be live. Ooh. Should be live from Kansas City, Missouri. Welcome to Fun University. It's good to have you here. Let's go ahead and hit the intro and start officially. If you haven't been here, hang on. Hi, I'm Mary Gunn. Welcome to Fun University. Hello, I'm Mary Gunn. I'm Mary Gunn, fun founder and head professor of Fun University and your intrepid hostess of Craft Roulette, which this is a spinoff of. This is Fun University taking a parameter from last week's show. I'm back to that, that standard, and I think it works really well. Um, taking a parameter from last week, episode 90, I'm a zero achiever milestone right there, um, or a Zam. Oh, Zam. Um Taking one of those parameters and dissecting it. This week's, uh, in the, on number 90, we had bridge card, <laughs> which was really a hoot and a holler. Our colors are pink, mint, plus two. We had to use a large word or words, and we had to bring in a stencil. Stencil, I feel like you can get any kind of information anywhere. I have nothing new on that. Large words, you all have your own ways to do that. You can do individual die or stamps and cut them out. Or you can get big um, dies and stamps and cut those out. You can, uh, I suppose they have little chipboard things and different things. But you can, all, you can figure out your own large word pretty well. But it was really fun the way you guys came up with stuff. If you have not seen this show, if you don't know, and I'm just jumping right in the middle of everything. Hmm. Fun University is just a, uh, we just dissect one of the parameters of last week's show. I think I already said that. But, um. So then, long. I'm not going to cover everything, and we're not going to go into depth about everything. Just one bridge. Oh, and I've got some great ideas. Pink, mint, and plus two. That was a really fun combination for you guys. You came up with all sorts of really pretty things. When you look at craftroulette.live on the gallery for number 90, you can see tons of different color combinations and different ways that you worked in the pink and mint. And you guys just did great. So I cannot express, I thought, oh man, we're not going to get any submissions this week. <laughs> They're just not going to come in because this is different. Bridge cards, I'm getting all this feedback. I've never made a bridge card. Even um, our our sweet Mary Polanco, who was our guest crafter, had not made a bridge card. But she set this tone, I think, for you guys to try it. She was gung-ho and tried it, and you guys just dug right in too. There were, again were 80 submissions, so... I don't, I, it, we're just kind of, we got to do that hundred that one time and, but you know, we're, it's at Christmas time and I think we're doing great. You guys are, we really appreciate you spending a little time on your weekends. We don't give you much time to make a card and you guys do well. So I love it. It's fun to see you guys in the chat. We've got Ashley. Oh, Ashley, I didn't realize you were a moderator. How fun. You're, you're a very good idea for that. Yay for you. Yay for Mr producer too i bet he's involved with that but it's good to see everybody yes we are live oh gosh you're good and christina's still up in sweden all right so i think i have a trick you like tricks nothing up my sleeve presto jango i think i have a trick for knowing and ins instead of having to know all these measurements for bridge cards i think i know how to help you make bridge cards and make them really simple and easy without knowing all sorts of, knowing two have three three measurements can you do it let's go down to paper cam and get this thing started we are going to talk about bridge cards bridge cards are a little bit fun because they're dimensional this was my card from friday night and it folds down and it fits into a regular whatever size card that you are intending it to be this is an a2 it is four and a fourth by five and a half and it folds up and it's dimensional and it sits like this and it is a i love it i could binge i could totally binge on these for quite a while but I've, it is off, it's off the parameters for now, but it'll be back. And you guys will be like, like the bosses of them because you're going to know what to do. But they look very difficult, but what they have is they have a base that has a couple extra folds. It has uh, some sort of bridge from one side to the other. And that's it. <laughs> so anyway, there's not that much different. It's just that you add 
two extra folds. And so you have to make it a little bit longer or taller, or a little bit longer to, to uh, fold down without losing a lot of space. So this is what I discovered in my, my math hacking experience. Let's see. This fellow is four and a fourth tall. So we'll go ahead and check out to find the bendy side. There's my bendy side, so I'm going to make it at four and a fourth because this side, this side pushes back. That's the non-bendy side. And this side folds, wants to just curl into a taco or a burrito. And th so that's the bendy side. So we're going to make this four and a half tall. So we go 90 degrees from... the other side okay so now what do we do how do we make it the right size for uh, to get five and a half this way with one inch one inch increments or we could make it one and a fourth inch increments or we could do a one and a one and a fourth and then a one and a fourth and a one hmm this is so cool I like cheating <laughs> on math. I don't think I, you know, I don't think I cheated in math because I never could figure out how. But um, I remember when we used to have to go to the board to do problems, I would sit there and just try to look at Pam Vineyard because she knew what she was doing and I didn't. And um, so anyway, that was that. So we're going to do a one. We're going to end up with a five and a half when we have it folded right. And then we're going to go to, let's just make it easy this time, two. So now we have two one-inch panels, these two guys right here. So let's go ahead and fold those in like so. Don't ask me to explain the math on this. It's, a, it's like subtraction and things. And so we've got this folded in. We're going to take it at five and a half. And Lord have mercy, I hope this is right. Cut that off. I didn't change any papers. This is all the original papers. Flip it over and then do the same thing. One and five. Or one and two. One and two, three and four. Let's do some creasing to make everything work really slick. The outside panels fold out. And so when you have it folded flat in the... Oh gosh, I hope this is right. When you have it folded flat in the envelope, it should be four and a fourth by five and a half. <laughs> Here is an A2 size envelope. Oh, wonderful, it worked. So all you have to do is figure out the first two folds... Fold it over, make it be the length that you want the whole card to be, flip it over, and then score again. Shall we try it on a, with a little deeper one? Ooh, that's getting dangerous. Now, this may be wrong. Yeah. I like it, though. Okay, so now this is four and a fourth tall. Let's try it with some alternating. I don't know if this works because I've never tried it. Okay, so we're going to do a one inch score and a two and a half inch score. So we have, we're going to have a one and a half panel there and a one panel there. Fold that over. And then we're going to find the five and a half right over here and cut it. Maybe, maybe I can show you without making you think I'm cheating. There we go. Flip it over. Go one. This may not work. And two and a half. We're gonna eat up some space. Like, no, we got the same space there. Oh, this is this is cool. And there we've got it again. It worked. Let's see. Five and a half? Five and a half. Oh, it's a little longer. That might have been my scoring. I think it was my scoring. But, be that as it may, it's still going to fit in there. I think it's this thing that's off. But there it is. It's going to fit in there just fine. 
That's very, very cool. I like that. You don't have to worry about... Ugh, you don't have to worry about too many numbers. So that is the... That's the... Uh, <laughs> That's the cheater's way, the non-math way to figure out how to make a fold for um, bridge cards. Ha, 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 And so this one's a little bit taller or a little bit wider, so you could actually put some extra bridge things in there. If you Then on the back, you just fold this so you know how much space you have on this back center panel. You can just uh, see my, my cutting and folding is off. You can take it and fold it closed and and get a number really easily. Or if you want to do it the non <laughs> the non math way, you can if you want to put a little center piece in there, you can just do this. Wrap that around there. You're going to be a little big here, so do that, pinch it and then pull it in just a little bit. I mean, little bit. And that's gonna be the inside. And so if you want to have another, another piece inside that's not quite to the top, that's how you can do that without doing any measurements. <laughs> <laughs> I get excited about not measuring. I like it. And then for a cross, you need to have a bridge. So you can just fold it down. Should be five and a half. You can always go out just a little bit because you can always snip. And then if you want to make a snow thing like I did the other night and you want two layers of snow, just go ahead and do a swervy. And then take your top swervy, like a puzzle piece, break it apart, and stick it on top. For those who love scenes, like um, Miss Ashley is a scene queen, so this would be something that you could do. You could make it taller, too. You can add some more. Anyway, you can have all sorts of fun, and you can, st but the deal about bridge cards that's different than a a2 card normally is it's got dimension. So you've got all sorts of opportunity to have Things look closer at, because they are closer and smaller and um, than in the background. All the little critters that are playing, you can put them on th two or three different layer um, dimensions. You can do all sorts of fun things. So um, don't don't be afraid of these. I don't think anybody is because you guys were just. Let's go ahead and cut another snowbank here. And I, these little guys on the side, when you cut them down, then, then they don't stick up so much. So you could put, uh, it, while you're building, and you don't want everything to be set in stone, but you don't want to lose your pieces, you can just do one side and use it as a flap while you're working on it. And then it still stays nice and flat, too, if you want to stamp on it or anything like that. But if you want to do edges and stuff like that, yeah, 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 you want, you want to wait. But you can do it that way. If you want to ink some edges and things, though, leave it off. Oh, that's going to be adorable. I am going to do something with that. If I had something cute, it would be really fun for some Yetis and things like that. Anyway, that's your that's how to do it. How to cut without measuring and still make an incredibly fun, I wonder what that, oh yeah, an incredibly fun card that's dimensional that will make whoever gets it just think you're just like a, a mechanic or an engineer. It's just pretty darn impressive. I love it. 
So <laughs> anyway, yes, loving the dimension for bridge cards. I and they're since they're so easy, Ashley, there's no reason to just make flat cards anymore because they are that easy, especially when you don't have to worry about numbers. So um <laughs> you're going to have to watch it. It really isn't too hard, Grandma Gay. And once you get it, you'll get it. You'll get it. It's so much easier than numbers, I think. But maybe you love numbers. So if you do love numbers, there's always the cheat. You need to have your template ready so that you can, so you can have that all written out with all your little suggestions and, and numbers on it. And that goes into your folder or or your drawer or whatever you have for your interactive or fancy folds so that you will have it next time that silly old wheel says, hey, how about a bridge card, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, crafters and craftette? Can we try a 5 by 7 Why, honey, can we ever? Here it is. Here is a 5 by 7 with a 1 and a half and a 3-inch pet. Um scoring but we can make it a little bit different i like making it seven inches tall let me get another piece of card stock checking out that there's my bendy side so i'm going to turn it a quarter of a turn and make it seven inches tall Scory, scory, scory. Oh, the, all sorts of stuff is underneath that, where that usually sits, that um, cutter, the little cutter. Let's just make these one inch. Do one and two inches. Fold it in half. We're going to make the total uh, five by seven. So we're going to make the total... Oh heck, is that what I'm, we want it five inches wide? So we want it seven inches tall, five inches wide. So we'll cut that. I think that's going to work. If not, and then we're going to flip it. One and two. The farthest in goes in, the farthest out goes out, farthest in goes in, farthest out goes out. And there you've got a five by seven. Can you do it the other way? I don't know. I, I don't know. But it's kind of a funny size. It's so tall. But you could do, it's almost like a slim line inside, and then you would just have some some little borders on the outside, which is pretty cool, actually. So think of a slimline die, maybe, or a slimline design that you like and know. And uh, you can put that in there on different layers. You've got an inch here, so you could do like a half inch. A um, couple of them. So if you did... I only want that half an inch. So you could make it really tall. Okay, I'm going to pinch this side and then push it in just a little bit. And I've got this a half inch, so I want that a half inch. So there's you. You've got your inside. Your inside fold that's just going to fold down with it as it closes. And then you can do another one on the outside, just being the bridge and being shaped or whatever. Or you can do multiple ones if you... <laughs> Fearless professor. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm foolish sometimes. But <laughs> oh, I'm glad you enjoyed it, Kathy. That was, it was fun. It really was. It was fun to watch them come in. And they were also so interesting. So you can also then bring it a little closer. You can, you can just stagger them a little bit and a little bit and a little bit until you're happy. 
All right. Oh, you could get pretty, pretty doggone intricate on this. I keep thinking there must be some kind of slide or um, you could do a shaker element inside and have it hanging from the top. Ooh, that would be fun. Um, and then just the bridge across the top. I mean the bottom or the top, whichever. You can put the bridge anywhere. You can have the bridge on the bottom. You can have the bridge inside where it's a it's decorative, like the people were doing large words across and they would grab each side. Or they were even acting like a stage <laughs> with with some um, the grand up there. So it was pretty darn cool. Um, anyway, yes, I think you can do any size. I think. There is also, you can even do a slimline size. Same thing, you just fold it in half, make sure you get the, and then you do the length of whatever slimline card you want with the height that you want, and then flip it over, score, score, same amount that you did on this side, and then there's your bridge card, and it's long. So, the idea, I think, you know, and it's just up, for interpretation and uh, manipulation, but the idea is to have these two connected. And so when you fold it flat like that, it goes in an envelope, and then when the recipient gets it, they get this, and they go, oh my gosh, that is the coolest card. I wish I was that smart. But um, they have to watch Craft Roulette <laughs> if they want to be that smart and come to fun. You know, there's other places to learn this. Let me show you some ideas that I had. This one we did show the other night, and it is an unusual size because I didn't know my trick at that point, and I was trying to follow somebody else's numbers, and I didn't do a very good job. So this was this was really quite fun to make, though. I used a little embossing, um, did some embossing in the background. This is all watercolored, and it was very uh, watered-down watercolor, so it was just the green, the yellow, and the red with a little bit of gray, so it was fun. I really enjoy, I still am enjoying looking at this. So, um, what are we saying here? I'm trying to see. Some, I saw something was important, but I don't see it. Um, Stephen's not in the room with me tonight, Roberta, so um, the other requirement is the, di oh, the distance between the edge and the first score must be greater. So it's getting a little bit too, uh, too complicated. But Roberta says, the only other requirement is that the distance between the edge and the first score must be greater than the or equal to the distance between the first and second score. So that's what she's saying. I don't I don't know. That sounds a little bit like uh, geomet geometry, and I can't even see the word. So <laughs> anyway, but I, now we've got it out there in the Ethernet, and maybe somebody will understand that that's smarter than I. And thank you. I do have a cute little card for you. Oh. You know, I was having my issues the other night, and I didn't finish this, but um, this is one that went ahead and gone, went over. Um, and this was what I did on the show, and I was just struggling with it. But I think it still has some, it still has some hope. I did put a little acetate back there. Can you see it? And that, to hold this in place, because uh, this wanted to not do so well. And then I would want to cover that up with some more flowers or something. So, that's that. Okay, so I have a fun little twist to things. I have two cards to show you a twist for, and then I think I think uh, this one is one in progress, and I think it's kind of cool. I thought, you know, can you do it with acetate? Because I had the acetate out, right? Okay, so first, you can't even see that, can you? Oh, brother. Um, first things first. When you go to score this, it's the same same principle, but when you go to score this, it will work a lot better if it has the protective coating off. The protecting protective coating didn't make it so that it was easy to fold and score or score and fold. And I I would oh man, I really wouldn't want to do this without scoring it first. So, but this is a what size is this? This is this is a good old A2. And then I went ahead and 
cut out some little branches, stamped and cut out some branches. I thought maybe a kind of a woodsy card would be pretty on this. It's not going to be able to be 100% tonight. Some little piney cones. This little guy needs a little bit of a little bit of pink on his tummy. So we'll just fill him in. A little bit of orangey pink. And I went ahead and just stamped him on some tan cardstock. So I didn't have to do much. These little fellows visit my suet feeder quite a bit. It's one of favorite one of Kerwin's favorite bird channel TV, the chickadee channel. Okay. When I die cut these, I cut die cut a thin piece of pattern paper on the back at the same time. Now when you because this is transparent, I didn't want the back to be ugly. So I went ahead and did that. Now the only thing with that is when you do die cut it, you put this guy on this way and then you have to have the pattern on the back side so that it will cut right. But I thought he might be that might be kind of pretty. I also have a piece of acetate right here for the bridge. And there's the protective stuff. Card with the first score at the one inch. Okay. Alrighty. And then we'll just put this little guy on here and we will. These are kind of oof, these aren't wanting to been stay nice but we'll figure it out and I am going to let's see what was I thinking on this what was I thinking there's always that moment um, I would think that these I might stick these on with a stapler honestly because they're not gonna I don't want to do the glue thing too much and I'm gonna put the I, I don't really have this figured out quite but we'll We'll keep working on it. I'm just going to glue that or staple that guy in. I think these edges, the pair, these little perpendicular edges should be pretty straight before you start putting that second, second piece on. There we go. And that's a pretty unobtrusive way to uh, to have that, I think. We can have some some of some of the little greenery in the back. We can have it over here. We are going to get some glue on there, but I, does this work? The the clear glue on this does it show through? I don't know. This one reminded me of Crafty Owl. She likes the acetate so much. That's what I was going to do. I was going to put this guy on the other side. And then glue the birdie. Like so. So then we don't have to see so much glue. Let's see what that looks like. You do see the glue, but it's pretty unobtrusive at that point. So maybe another... Hmm, I can't do this one on the back side, though. But if you, you could do... Yes, yes, yes. We can glue this guy on the back. Just on the back, on the edge. And then we can cover it up by gluing the second one along the t opposite edge. So we glued down here for the back side. And then we'll glue up here on the back. 
for the front side. They're not going to be, um, then we can stagger them. They're not going to be roughed up too much, I hope. So, and then we can put in a, a little pine cone. Oh, I got two pine cones. A little pine cone, but we can put the glue on the top right here so that it's underneath the other pieces instead of being on the card itself. I only have one more. I made several. Okay. Well, we'll just keep working on the same principle. Just put a little glue on there. Kind of awkward. But it's worth it. Here we go. Put a little guy on there. I suppose a little a little glue wouldn't be as bad as a lot, I suppose. I don't know. Your glue tolerance level, I guess, is a very personal thing. So we can go ahead and put this guy on here. I'm only going to glue this part because that's the part that I'm going to have covered up with this guy. Oops, I think I put too much on. Well, this could get messy fast. And I didn't have another... Oh my, I'm moving things around before they're dry. <laughs> There's nothing impatient about me. Nope, 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 nope. I do need another one of those. I really thought I had more, but I can bring in more. <laughs> oh, let's see if that one. And then just put a little um, message across here. Kind of pretty. Add some more. You could even add. Then it will close up. Oh, that wouldn't work. We don't need him back there, do we? Come here. Come here, Felix. Felix the chickadee. It is not going to dry fast. It's wet, and I'm ripping it, and it's okay. Oh, I hear sirens. Do you think it's the craft police? Oh, my gosh. The stress. And now I've lost these guys. Well, we're off to... I, I knew it was going to be a hit and miss. Well, okay. I'm going to let you guys rest. You've got some great potential here. I'm not sure how we're going to finish you off, but I'm going to uh, let you guys rest because you are just giving not wanting to stay and i i don't i don't blame you who wants to be stuck on a card when you can be flying in the sky okay so that's kind of a acetate well had to try it and i only thought of it at about six o'clock so these things happen all right i will report back to you on that i do have another card for you and it's cute it's cute and it's kind of a tricky little a tricky little thing, but it's not bad like the acetate one. <laughs> we try. This is like a research campus, you know. We do research here. Okie doke. These are my pieces. It's going to be an A2. You can see it. It's going to be a tall. Oh, you can't see it. It's going to be an A2. It's going to be a tall A2, one-inch panels, one, two, three, four, with about a two-and-a-fourth-inch center wide. So we're going to make something, and he's going to be cute. He's going to fit inside here. Oh, I forgot one thing. But I'll figure, I, you know what? I'm going to, I got an alternative. I always have alternatives. This is going to be a snowman. But we're not going to get all fancy with him. We're going to make him simple. 
because snowmen are simple. I need a pencil. Now, I did measure this, and it does go inside there, so he'll be just fine. He's going to be kind of a tall, skinny snowman. And I put him on a fold for a reason. I'm not sure if it really matters, but I did put him on a fold for a reason. So here's my basic shape. And it's not going to probably... St I'm going to fold that inside. I'm just going to fold two pieces at once. Cut two pieces at once. He's an organic snowman. Snow is organic. There we go. Now we can flip him inside out. And there he is. No worse for the wear. The reason we're, he's going to be an ornament. So I wanted to make sure he had a back and a front. Didn't have to worry about um, being, being ugly on one side. I'm going to punch out his eyes. <laughs> Don't look if you have a weak stomach. I'm punching out his eyes. I have a piece for his hat and a piece for his hat's brim. I... going to get another piece of black just for his eyeballs. I wanted him to be sunken instead of on top. You could put glasses on him or a mask. You only need eyeballs on one side. I'm just going to cut him a nice team orange nose because team purple noses look weird just saying and I'm going to take a Copic because I underuse them and just do the edges and that covers up that little white edge which is overthinking Thank you so much. <laughs> Talks to your cards? Absolutely. <laughs> Someday is just when you think they answer you back. That's the problem. And I am not going to give him a mouth. That's my discretion on this particular guy. Got a little foam tool and some light blue to go around. Before we put them all together, this does work better at this point. Ask me how I know. And the back side too, because he's going to have a front and a back. This guy is getting some smudges. He's got some dirty snow. Alrighty. Then for his buttons, I'm just going to put three of these guys. Three little holes punched out. Those would work well, probably better if I put some black on the edges too, or used a solid black stock, cardstock, which I didn't. Okay, so now we can put these guys together. Line them up real pretty. Black gems would look good. Yes, sir, Travis, you are on it. Okay, now we're going to check to see how tall we can make his cap. There are purple carrots, I know. <laughs> I'm just not quite ready 
for a purple carrot. Well, you could make a purple carrot. I'm team orange. <laughs> okay, so how tall can his hat be? Let's do it without measuring <laughs> with numbers. Without measuring with numbers. Okay, if he's hanging here, he's going to hang from this card. So his cap can his hat can be about that tall. Okie dokie. So we'll go ahead and fold this so we cut it at the same time for his height. Yep, that's going to be a good height. And then generally their hats go from a little bit smaller at the inside to a little bit outside. A little bit like so. Looks a little bit like he's got a, a fez on. Yes. He does look a bit Russian there, doesn't he? Or a little bit of a fez. Okay. So I'm going to cut this top part because I'm going to... Well, nope. The other one I put a... I don't think... Let's see. Do I have a small paper clip in here? I do. How lovely. I'll use my green one. Okay, so this is going to be my little hook for my... for my ornament. And I'm just going to cut a tiny little slot that has a little bit of an indention for interest. The little guy goes right in there so that we can have our little hook. Then we'll just tape him down because I'm into easy. Then we'll just seal him up. Next step is to put this all. I'm going to put it just on the tip of his head. And then we're going to add, so he doesn't look quite so dorky. We're going to add, we don't want to make this bigger than two inches. So let's put it in here and make sure that it's not too wide. We're going to cut two of those. And sandwich those like that. Okay. I kind of, you know, if you wanted a dorky look, he looks a well, I don't want to say that it looks dorky, but he looks a little Ru Russian Orthodox. My big fat Greek wedding, you know? Lest you think I know anything about world religions. I only know from my big fat Greek wedding. There we go. Then we can come in with a little gel pen, a little, little this, little that. We'll be good. Look at him. He's so cute. And he's going to fit right in here. He's going to be a darling little guy. <laughs> Hi, Bitty Penny. There we go. Then for his, because a lot to um, draw on his little his little scarf is a pain in the butt or in the tush. <laughs> so I just found a small piece of a ribbon that was a leftover scavenged job. I have no idea where it was from. <laughs> Hi, Lisa Hall. How are you? So we'll just have this little guy. He does have a knot in that one. I don't know if I can do a knot in this one. But we can try. Feeling mighty fat fingered tonight. Here's a little tiny peephole. Here we go. Come on. Maybe another day. So we'll just do my pro You know, there is another way to fix this. We just go ahead and trim this one off with these cruel, very dull scissors. 
They're paper scissors. And then we trim this one off. And we don't have to worry about it. Okay, now they're the same. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? That's just amazing. I love it. I love amazing things. Um, now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do a little snowing. You could put snowflakes on with some embossing, some white embossing. That would be pretty. Or we can make handmade snowflakes with a number 10 Sukora jelly roll pen. Just by doing a simple X, line right through the top, line right through the middle. X, line through the top, through the middle. X, line top, middle, line X. And you just do it over and over. You see an empty place and you do it. And if it gets a little wonky, every snowflake's different, you've got a cover. Oh, that one was, I started in the wrong way. And it still worked. You can also do little dots with this if you don't want to do the X line line. And if you don't want to do very many of them, do them big. But if you enjoy the little pastime of doing X's and lines, just have make yourself comfortable and have a good time. <laughs> and we can add a few little, line, a little dots too. They're farther in the background. You can't see them as well. These are the Hallmark snowflakes that do not melt. Even when they touch 98.6 degree human people. It's a miracle. You want to have them partially off the edge as well. So they don't look like little regiments of snow soldiers unless that's the look you're going for it's not it doesn't take very long and you know you can kind of get hypnotized there we go we're going to put in a layer of snow in the background so we don't have to worry too much about that. So let's fold it up and find out where we're gonna how big to make this layer of snow. Fold, fold this guy in. Pinch this side and then pull it in just a little bit. Just line it up. It doesn't have to be, it's a snowbank, so you don't have to do too much work to make it. All perfect. You know, I don't even suppose it has to be dimensional. Snowbanks, you know, snowbanks. There we go. Then we'll have something on the outside. He's a little bit shy. Okay, let's go this way. We're just going to make him fold this way, fit into this space. I don't like that. This is how I did the other one. I'm going to do it this way. It's going to go clear out to that first fold, fold it in. There we go. So that's going to be on the outside and then We'll bring this first fold in, top fold down, and fold that across there. There we go. And that's going to be cut. There's other ways to do this for those who want to measure. <laughs> and want it perfect. It's not going to. There we go. So there we, we're going to have a snow drift for him to be in the back and on top of. In, this is instead of having it stick up and having a dimensional center part. This is just a background. Kind of 
kind of whirly and swirly. And you know, if it sticks out on the bottom or on the side a little bit, same old thing, just like when you trim a, the edge of another card or something, you can trim it once it gets dry. Okay, now this is the part where we get a little bit tricky. We're going to be having him hang from a string at the top. <laughs> okay, oh my gosh, why do I think of these things? But actually it works out pretty well. So I'm going to get my pokey tool. I hope. Yes, I am. Make a little room for myself. I'm going to get a pokey tool and I'm going to poke a hole right here. Oh, it's like, mm, it's more than a fourth of an inch. It's three eighths of an inch in the center. Now, this is not going to be a toy so much. So, you don't, have to, I'm not going to worry about it being tossed and turned around. Well, I could worry, but I'm not going to. And then um, I'm going to get my big club needle that's, uh, I don't know what these are for. Cruel? Cruel. That's what it is. C-R-E-W-E-L. And then it doesn't have a sharp point at all. And then we're going to, but it's got a big eye. <laughs> so that's the one we want, a big eye. And then we're going to just put it through those holes. And it's going to make the holes a little bit bigger. You could put a reinforcement on the back if you wanted, or on the sides, but I'm not, I don't want to. And it comes on around. So then when it gets to the front, this guy, whoops. We're just going to tie him right on there. Give yourself a lot of space. This is um, embroidery, hmm, something. And then he just ties right on there. He's gonna be a little bit taller. And you know, I bet if you had something under there, it might work better. Let's see. Just like a pencil to just enough tie height. Stay there, don't move, quit. So they can just, tie, they can cut it off or tie it or untie it. I'm going to make a knot though. I don't want these guys too tight. Forget the pencil. You were no help at all. Maybe some, maybe a little stack of foam, of uh, some kind of foam would work. And then to, See, there he's, he's being held up. But to make sure that he stays where you want him, then you can come in the back and just give it a tug because he's a little bit heavy. And then tape it down. And it's not going to show because you can add... Get up there, guy. Because you can add... <laughs> Ten hands! Who... More hands on deck. All hands on deck. Bring him on down here. You're going to add a little card in the back. So you're going to cover that up. And there he floats. Then you can do the front little guy. He's kind of tight there. Stretch. You can always untie him a little bit. Give him a little space. You can put his... That's too tall. Give him a new snowdrift. Stamp a happy Merry Christmas or believe or whatever you want to stamp. I got a believe right here. I don't know if that's straight. We're going to just believe that it's straight. Eh, straight enough. Give it a little matching blue. You can come in here with uh, the shimmer or whatever you like. And that's just going to fold right there. Since he moves, you don't, he could be a little bit taller. But um, 
because he moves around and it doesn't have to be stuck right in the middle. It's kind of groovy that way. And then um, da, 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 da. you can just put a little glue hoo on the edges. And maybe we can get that kind of straight. Kind of. Kind of straight. There, that'll determine life as the snowman knows it. And because I was running out of time, I will show you how he fixes up. Here he is, kind of fancified, except I made it over here on the side. I added some, a little bit of white gel pen and some holly, a little white button holes on his buttons and a little highlight on his eyes. I worked with some other things going across. I just didn't like it. Um, I think it would be maybe cute if it were inside on the inside, maybe. Just a little piece on the inside, but not clear at the top. I thought it looked clunky. Um, so, and then they can just untie that and put him on his tree. And then you can see how that one's taped. And then you can make a small card for the back. Since I know this is like two inches. So this is four inches. And you can hide your tape. And then that can go right back there, and you can put your little note in there. Make sure you tell him that he needs to be untied. <laughs> so, <laughs> but that way you can cover up your, your stuff. So, yep, yep. All right, so that's what I got tonight. I will have information uh, for the patrons on Thursday on tips and what worked and what didn't. And I also have another secret card for you guys on Thursday. Also a bridge card. Something I've never quite seen. It is another ornament card and I think you're going to love it. All right. Let's see what we got. There's those patrons. The the They get extra extra credit, <laughs> extra bonus content, especially the fun supporters and club fun get the notes on the classes tonight and the extra stuff like that i hope you guys are enjoying the fun mondays though and that's a i've been enjoying sharing some good good ideas with you there too and i have them all ready for the next few weeks so i'm very excited about that i know bitty penny we're a mess aren't we <laughs> we'd much rather play than do anything else <laughs> Oh, good. Sandy Boone, I'm glad you have some ideas. We love it when you have ideas. Sandy Boone is here, Mr. Mike. Say hi. He's shy. All right. Anyway, we do appreciate you, our patrons. You guys are making it happen so that we can say hi ever, twice a week on Fun University and on Craft Roulette. This week, we do have Christine Bertram. She is always just, oh, I got to take some Gerotol. She is just a little live wire. But then again, she's a lot younger than I am. I was old enough to babysit her when she was a baby. Um, and this is crochet. This is crochet thread. I saw embroidery floss. Uh, you could use embroidery floss, anything like that. You could use baker's twine or anything. You could use fuzzy, fuzzy yarn. Fuzzy yarn is kind of, it used to be hip. I've been through it all. Um, yes, please set those uh, thumbs up, share, subscribe if you haven't. We appreciate you being here. Um, anything else? Oh, I, you know, I've got some catch-up work to do. <laughs> okay, here's the deal. I do have some catch-up work to do for Club Fun, and I, I'm not going to do Fun University in t again until next year. So... This is it. Signing off for the year. Um, it's been a, it's been fun. We have really changed Fun University this year. <sighs> it's different. It's fun, and I love it. And I love spending time with you. And yep, fishing line that would work too, except it wouldn't untie very well. Oh yeah. Anyway. Oh, okay. Um, so we will catch you on Craft Roulette, though. We, uh, this the, for the rest of the year, except for Christmas Eve, we will be having a special guest come in. Um, Mrs. Claus will be reading the Santa's Long Pants for the children of all ages. So make sure you tune in to see Mrs. Claus if you haven't. She looks a lot like me. Actually, she's my twin sister, Mary. 
Mary Claus. I'm Mary Gunn. So, and then we do have Justine Hovey um, on Chris, uh, whatever, and Corey Wiskman in between. So we've got three more craft roulettes before the new year. All right, that's enough. That's enough. We will talk to you soon. Thank you guys for being here. I look forward to reading your comments. Mwah. Kiss those brains. Um, mine feels like it's a little scattered, but that's normal. One for you. Really appreciate you. Love you a bunch. And talk to you soon. Bye-bye.